So, the Scarlet Crusade. I love the Scarlet Crusade. That's like, you know, quintessential Can you not wow. see it? Brothers and sisters, there is but one way to wipe the scourge from the face of Azeroth. What's that? The Scarlet Crusade offers you the protection that you so desperately desire. And if you pledge yourselves to us, surely we will reach our ultimate goal. Who, who, who will match me? Who will match me? I'm donating $10. Who will match me? Oh my god, that's the first thing I think of. Defy us, and you will be dispatched in a blaze of golden light unlike any you have ever witnessed. What, they're gonna kill this guy just because he's in a black metal band? That seems a little bit unfair. Wow. The Scarlet Crusade is one of the more unique enemies you'll face while exploring Azeroth. Yep. On the outside, they might seem like your normal group of everyday paladins, but in truth, they are a vengeful group of fanatic worshippers of the light who destroy all who don't share their radical views. Yeah. Their history is one of sympathetic origins, but the corruption and the inevitable downfall of their crusade was all because of the underlying deceit within the heart of their organization. <laughs> See, that's what was cool, right? Is it was actually all by a dreadlord, but everybody knew, like, but like you knew that in game. That was fucking badass. First, a quick word from today's sponsor. Okay. Keeps. Look, dudes, because uh, most of you are dudes. Did you know that two out of three dudes experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Yeah. Well, thankfully, Keeps can help prevent those precious hairs from falling off your head exactly. with their FDA-approved medication for hair loss. Oh. The best thing about Keeps is you can get treated right from the comfort of your own home by signing up online and getting connected with a wow. doctor who helps you in your mission to restore your luscious locks. And remember, it's important to act fast as the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. If you're ready to take action and prevent- Wait, I, this video came out five months ago. I'm too late. It came out two months ago, five months ago. I'm fucked, man. Go to keeps.com slash platinum or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. I that think is this is probably the smartest ad they've ever done. Like targeting the world of Warcraft audience for hair loss products. I mean, this is like, I mean, fuck, bro. Like this is like going to a rave and selling Molly. Like there, everybody there is like that's that's like that's your target audience. They're all right there. Holy shit! K e e p s dot com slash platinum. <laughs> yeah, very funny. The third war has just concluded on Azeroth. Okay. The kingdom of Lordaeron has been totally destroyed by the scourge after the kingdom's prince, Arthas Menethil, betrayed his people yeah. and allied with the undead and killed his own father yeah, and his was... mentor Uther. The group of paladins called the Knights of the Silver Hand was disbanded. But these crusaders continue to fight to defend fortified settlements where survivors cling to life. One of these paladins was a mountain of a man named Sadan Dathrohan, who was one of the original founders of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Oh shit! Dathrohan's significance is not because of his accomplishments, but because of his defeat. Uh, During yeah. an incursion into the burning city of Strathholm, Dathrohan- What a surprise, Paladin died. Oh my god. Like, how is it that, like, every notable Paladin in the entire history of paladins. Like, okay, let's think about all of the paladins, okay? So you have uh, Uther, literally defeated by Arthas before he even became the Lich King, all right? Number one. Uh, Tyrion killed the Lich King, all right? That's pretty good, but tied to a fucking mid-level tier boss. Um, you have, uh, let's see, who are the other paladins? Uh, Varian, oh, oh, uh, fucking, what's his name? Uh, Tyr not Tyrion, uh, Tyralian, uh, gets his sword blocked by Illidan. Uh, it's like literally every single paladin, the, the, the main, the main thing you know about them is the fact that they lost a battle. 
Bolvar for Dragon. I don't think he was really a Paladin, but yeah, he turned into the Lich King. Damn, man. Like, every single one. ...was separated from his fellow Paladins. Damn. He could cut down the undead with ease, but there was more than shambling zombies in this cursed city. Huh? Know that I am Balnazar. Know that you are but a pawn in plans beyond your reckoning. <laughs> you cannot fight my will. <laughs> True. You are mine. You are out of your league, Paladin. So I need to turn that into a fright. Look at that. Oh, it's a. Fine. You are out of your league, Paladin. God damn, bro. Like that, I've. Dude, that is true. Let me tell you something. That's fucking true. Satan Dathurhan had fallen right into With the what? Dreadlord Balnazar's trap. Do you want to duel? duel? The demonic master. Well, I'm again. What? Log in, let's duel. Well, you have better gear than I do right now. No, I don't. It's not that much better. Log yeah, in. Yeah, it is. Oh, no, it fucking is better. Log in, and okay, let's duel. Okay, all right, all right. Here. Give me an example of a paladin whose you main can't. plot... You're such a coward. Give me an example you of are a... You will gladly sit up here in front of all yeah? these thousands of people talking all this shit, but you won't duel me. That's be because you're a pussy. Because pal you're a coward. Yeah, I'm not. I'm Point a warrior. Proven, I'm a bitch. warrior. No, let, let's. Yeah, and warriors are literally stupid and idiotic. That warriors graduate to paladins. Do you understand that? No. Like, you have to. You have to graduate to be a paladin. That's not true Everybody, at all. Anybody, literally anybody, can pick up a fucking stick and swing around. Oh, blaze door, blaze door. Not everybody can be a paladin, okay? Paladin it's requires... because they don't want to be. No, it's because they can't. Because being a paladin requires, okay... What does it some, require? Some sacrifice, okay? Not on the level of demon hunters, okay? Yeah, what well, they sac sacrifice? they've sacrificed them all the time. So that's why every paladin dies. Buddy, I literally have a, a blessing called Blessing of Sacrifice, okay? Yeah, it makes you take damage. Yes. Yeah, you used to have divine intervention too. What did that do? It literally saved the life of an ally. It literally kills your character. That's what paladins do. It's built Just, into the. It's literally yes, coded into the game that paladins the kill themselves. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a balancing act. You die, but you save your friends. Who did? Maybe you know what? <laughs> Trust me, buddy. Go ahead. Sacrificing something for your friends is is not something you will ever understand, bitch. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, so let's let's talk about this. Sacrifices. Uther died to Arthas of no consequence. Tyrion died to Croesus of no consequence. Tyrion got his sword blocked by Illidan, and it was of absolutely no consequence. Like I feel like after that cinematic came out, people probably stopped making paladins. Like, that was it. Like, nobody, like, all right, they, they saw what that has to offer. Well, fuck that. Jesus. Mastermind's ultimate plan was to possess his body and infiltrate the Order of Paladins and pull the strings behind the scenes. Because the Paladins wouldn't know the difference because they're stupid. And destroy True. them from within. I've been waiting for you, Paladin. Know that I will rip the soul from your flesh and make your body... My own. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. As Balnazar infiltrated their defenses, a paragon of light traveled from the west. Hi, Lord Alexandros Mograine. I want to say that I'm pretty sure there's no evidence of Alexandros Mograine ever actually using a uh, holy power. It was only the sword that had holy damage in it. So Alexandros Mograine was basically a warrior. He was. And whenever he shows up, 
in the in the event in Vanilla WoW, what armor is he wearing? What armor is he wearing? Full Dreadnought. The Warrior Tier 3 armor. He has a weapon. Yes, he is a warrior with a holy weapon. So this is the greatest paladin that they all look up to was actually just a warrior. He was one of the original founders of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Yeah. Armed with a holy artifact called the Ashbringer, the paladin could cleave mm. entire armies of undead in twain no and leave only ash in his wake. Yep. I cannot stress enough how much of a badass Mograin was. He was like the master chief of paladins, yes. who was a beacon of light. And he was the master chief of paladins, and he was a warrior. That's exactly right. For the downtrodden people of Lordaeron. He became such a legend that he was simply Bro, referred you, to as- you actually are coping. You're, you are actually coping, if you think that. You're actually coping. Okay. That like if they could put the copium emo in chat they would do that right now because that's what this is then explain to me why he was wearing the warrior tier 3 armor because i don't know the devs are fucking stupid but that doesn't ah. mean i can go to the fucking auction i can go to the black mark auction house right now and buy it and wear it yeah I'm but still... that was before that patch came out okay so now you're using in-game mechanics to explain well, why you think well, he's no. a warrior instead well, of a no. it, even it, though it was not it was an in-game decision he was clearly a warrior that's why he was wearing warrior tier three here dude paladins are literally upgraded warriors he had a sword it's like whenever i it's like are you, <laughs> you're trolling me. it's like you're an elven me. ring whenever i had the uh the fucking pole arm and it had holy damage am i being that, trolled? that's like the ashbringer I, I think I, I wasn't <laughs> casting any spells. I wasn't a paladin. No, I didn't have any drunk. points in I'm faith. Well, actually, I put three. But that was. No, 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 you're not serious. You're not serious. You are not a serious person. I, if you think Alexandros Mograine was a warrior he was. and not a paladin, even though he founded, he was one of the people that founded the fucking thing, the Nest of the Silver Hand, and you think he's a warrior? Where's, a e where's him ever using a paladin spell? Oh my god. How. Like, what do you want him to do? Something. What, what is it? Anything. He's, he literally torches undead into with, ashes. That's right. With his warrior abilities. What is Wake of Ashes? <laughs> it's a cleave. Warriors oh cleave. Really? Paladins so had can, no can, AoE abilities. So, they didn't get AoE okay, abilities okay, okay. for 3D expansions. Can you do, on your warrior in-game, can you do Wake of Ashes? Well, no, because I don't have the Ashbringer. <laughs> okay. So you admit, then... Because I can do it. I just pressed it. Because you have the Ashbringer. Uh, yeah, I just pressed it. You know why? You know why I was able to use that ability? Because I'm a fucking paladin. No, it's because you, know you have the Ashbringer. It's not because you're paladin. No, Anybody could use dude, that. It's because I'm a paladin and so was Alexandra Smogreen. You fucking clown. What do you guys think? Am I right about this? The 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 paladin with with uh the paladin with warrior gear that never casts paladin spells? Like, McConnell's right. No, you're definitely wrong. No, I'm not. See? No, I'm not. See, dumbass, everybody no. disagrees with you. He was a warrior, guys. Like, and also, like, look at him in Maldraxxus. You see him casting... Any... Go look up his Wapita page. Go that, look it up. That could be wrong. Like, uh, that could be wrong. <laughs> but, like... Oh, my God. Just, so, just ignore every piece of any lore that's given to you and just only accept what you believe is true. And you're, how are you any different than a fucking SJW again? All right, all right, Dumbass. let's see, let's see. We've got a poll here. Well, no, I mean, guy. Look, look at the poll, look at the poll, look at the poll. Oh, my God. This is a fake poll. Like, that's a, that, no, man. Like, no, it's not 71% think he's a paladin. He's not a paladin, man. He's not a fucking paladin. Like, are you kidding me? God damn it. All right, I'll get back to the video. This is Go for Fuck. It. The Ashbringer. The Ashbringer also had two sons. One yep. was named Darian, who has the most anime haircut in all of Warcraft, but more on him later. Uh, the other son was named Renault. That was the who dumb was guy. The ways of the Paladin under Satan 
Dathrohan. Oh. Oh. Over time, Satan Dathrohan, a.k.a. Balnazar, manipulated yeah. Renault. He preyed on his insecurities, oh my knowing God. that he would always live in the shadow of his father. True. Renault is, and always will be, a lowly foot soldier. Yeah. A simple follower, and not a leader like his father. But Satan offered him a proposition. If Renault was to kill his own father, he would be promoted to be a commanding officer in his order of paladins, and be granted the glory he justly deserved. Hey, I think you should kill your dad. Okay. <laughs> oh, I will. D God damn, that was easy. Holy shit. So that that's all it took? <laughs> Dot, you got well, fooled. Well, that was uh, surprisingly easy. <laughs> Renault then lied to his father telling him that his brother Darian was trapped within Stratholm and needed to be rescued. What? Alexandros Mograine and his advisor Fairbanks traveled Wait, to that's the Burning Fairbanks? City only to be overwhelmed by Scourge forces. Oh my god, I didn't even know that. Ah! Oh no! Oh my god. This is just like finding Nemo, except with all the zombies. One epic battle later. Wait, oh. The High Lord fell to the ground, exhausted after obliterating every vile creature that stood in his wake. But it was at this moment that the High Lord's son delivered the ultimate betrayal. Wow! This act of pure evil and resentment corrupted the Ashbringer, turning it into a weapon of hatred instead of retribution. Uh. Renault fled, returning to the town of Hearthglen to tell everyone of the death of the Ashbringer. Holy shit, I did not know. Like, I thought that he got... I... Definitely a paladin, a warrior would have succeeded. Yeah, wait, wait, why didn't he take... Yeah, he should have taken the sword, man. Damn. Dreadnought armor was originally Mograine's personal suit of paladin armor. Warriors modeled their armor after his... After his death? No, that's not true. Uh, that's that sounds like bullshit to me. No, no, uh, uh, nope. So there's the Ashbringer, and there's a bunch of zombies, and the zombies were like, blah, and the Ashbringer went, blah, and then there was an abomination guy, and he went, and then he went, blah, 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 and, and they the got Ashbringer him. died. And yeah, that's what happened. Well, that's terrible. Mm hmm. <laughs> Some of the paladins were quite skeptical, to say yeah. the least. Satan had been acting quite suspicious recently, and this tall tale didn't really seem to add up. You! It was you, Renault, that killed Alexandros. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. The Ashbringer thrust right through your father's back. Oh my oh, god. Fairbanks. Wait, he got uh, called out like that? Not see the puppet show? Clearly, it was the- I know what I saw, you traitorous bastard! Fairbanks barging in and spilling this truth- Oh my was god. ...was the final straw for half of the Order of Paladins, and they left instantly. They went to go yeah. create a new order Fuck that wasn't that. led by such sketchy and fanatic leaders like Satan and Renault. The ones that stayed decided that they'd just- Quarantine Fairbanks, oh. who was now deemed as unclean and insane. And by That's quarantine, smart. I mean they executed him and threw him in a secret chamber in the cathedral. From this point- Holy shit, I actually didn't even know that. Wow, so that's how he got there. Oh my god. That's actually crazy, I had no idea.
Onwards, the priests, paladins, and all other followers of the light separated themselves into two different organizations. Okay. The ones that really didn't trust Satan Datherhan left and called themselves the Argent Dawn, led by Lord Maxwell Tyrosus. This organization is accepting of all outsiders, whether they be Horde, Alliance, or even Forsaken, and their main goal is to establish peace okay. and destroy the Scourge. Yeah. The other group is called the Scarlet Crusade, led by Satan Datherhan. This organization is extremely against any outsiders, especially if they aren't humans. For okay. The <laughs> Rather than establish peace, their main goal is to reclaim the ruined lands of Lordaeron once again and deliver retribution to the monsters that surround them. Satan made sure that he struck fear. I actually like the Scarlet Crusade, to be honest. I think they've got some good points. We should hear what they have to say. Yeah, I, I think they've got a good perspective on things. To be honest, guys, this, uh, this looks just about right. I agree. Fear and paranoia into his followers, warning them that any outsiders could be unclean and could be secretly carrying the Plague of Undeath. Showing mercy to them would only pull them further away from their goal of eradicating all evil from Lordaeron. So they're killing, uh, gnomes too. That's great. Yeah, this is crazy. Heathen! Oh. <laughs> now, clearly the Scarlet Crusade are all not right. really good people, but let's look at this from their perspective. Okay. You are a citizen of Lordaeron. Right. You had your entire family killed by zombies. Yeah and your life destroyed. That sucks. A plague wiped through your whole kingdom that came from infected grain of all things. Yeah. So I mean, how could you not be nervous about other ways the plague could be transferred? That makes sense. I mean, the enemy you're fighting also has flying death fortresses. That is a pretty strong argument that they're the bad guys. Yeah, I would definitely agree. Absolutely. So who knows what unholy tricks they might have up their sleeve. Also, keep in mind that some citizens were saved and converted into the Scarlet Crusade. Mm -hmm. And if we simply just look at the map in Classic, the Scarlet Crusade are the only ones getting shit done around here. They have three different fortified bases all around Lordaeron, yeah. while this Argent Dawn has a shitty camp and an even shittier rundown church. This Wait, yeah, that actually is kind of true. Yeah, the Scarlet Crusade is actually chilling. Not so bad after all. Yeah, exactly. That's not too bad. Isn't about being morally good for yeah. some members of the Scarlet Crusade. This is about survival. Also, their beloved capital city that was a deeply religious and known place of worship yeah. of the light was taken over by zombies that look exactly like the ones that destroyed it in the first place. As a living human, how can you be okay with that? But also- I wasn't, and I thought that we should have- we should have fucking attacked Lordaeron a long time ago and gotten Sylvanas out of there. This was our fucking city. This was our- our shit. This was our fucking city. And then, uh, I don't know what happened, but we just decided to just pussy out and never do that. That's the forsaken half of them. Like, fuck them. Kill them. Get them out of here. Make them go somewhere else. Oh, from the forsaken's perspective, who live in the capital city, we'll get rid they of them. too are citizens of Lordaeron, who have retained all their memories from when they were alive and are now treated as monsters. And this is the only place That's they the really can live. This is what makes the Scarlet Crusade such an interesting villain and in wow. They are a group of people who, from their perspective, have pretty reasonable motivations yeah. to avenge their kingdom, I can but have see been that. pushed and manipulated into paranoia and desperation that made them lose grasp of reality and turned into the villains on Azeroth. To be fair, it was all just a dreadlord pulling the strings, let's be honest. Now Shit. that we know the jailer? insidious yep. origins of he the Crusade, this. let's go through each expansion in WoW and learn how the Scarlet Crusade was ultimately defeated. First, what the fuck? let's start with Is Classic BFA? and get to know the leaders of the Scarlet Monastery and their nefarious deeds. Okay. Tell me, tell me everything. Within the dark depths of the temple, 
Interrogator Vicious is known for unleashing his unrelenting sadism and cruel expertise against the enemies of the Crusade. During yeah, he's classic, basically a, a, a quest torture that guy. involves him stealing a wedding ring from one of his torture subjects and giving it to his own wife, which is just oh so incredibly evil. Interrogator Vicious also makes an appearance within the Brawlers Guild, and the announcer will yell, Well, wrap me in leather and tug my leash. It's Dungeon Master Vicious. So, uh... I wonder if they changed that, uh, that line. Uh, yeah, I wonder if they changed that one. Holy shit. You can do with that information what you will. Cancel troops. Hound Master Loxie trains his savage hounds of the crusade to sniff out the unclean and Brothers hunt Guild's them down true. within the forests of Tirasfall Glades. You will not defile these mysteries. Within the library... I remember this guy, bro, like, whenever you got level 34, this guy was all you wanted to kill whenever you were a caster. Like, he dropped the staff, he dropped the chess piece. There were so many caster items this guy had. Holy fuck, bro, like, that staff was the biggest fucking staff. Oh my god. Is that tabard available? Uh, which one? This one? Uh, no. Master Mage Arcanus Doan combs over his tomes and teaches Epic the fellow mages too? of the yeah. crusade on how to master the like super of the low drop chance to destroy the undead. Ah, I've been waiting for a real challenge. Within the Hall of Champions, Herod is I'll be honest. Herod is literally just a shirtless guy with an axe who says, Blades of Life! But what's more yeah. interesting is the room he's in, which is called the Hall of Champions. Here we can see a bunch of different statues of slain or missing members of the crusade. What's confusing though is there are statues of elves and dwarves, which kind of goes against the whole ethos of the crusade in the first place. Yeah, so Blizzard uh, making having massive plot holes and everything you doing not making sense, this is not new. It, it's pretty much always been like this. Yeah, it's always been like this. There's always been bullshit like this. And it's like, what about this? It's like, I remember, like, there was one time, uh, I think Jesse Cox went to the, the thing, and there was this giant tail of a monster in Gundrak. And he's like, so what is that? And, like, I think it was Chris Metzler was like, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't even know what that is. And he's like, yeah, I knew you'd say that. I've got a picture. And he pulls up a picture of it, and he's like, wow, that's crazy. Damn. And we put that in the game? And Jesse's like, yeah. He's like, wow. Well, ain't that something? Well, next question. That was about it. Even funnier about this place is the yeah. names of the, the people and how uncreative they are. We got Valia Artists Twin just Blades. do crazy stuff, don't they? He's got yeah. two blades. We got Invar One Arm. He's got one arm. We got Yana Blood Spear. He's got a spear. Okay. We got... Wait, hold on. Well, Wait, no, what no, the no, fuck? Wrong universe. But one of the more interesting ones is Holia Sunshield, who's got a shield. But what's interesting about her is the plaque for the statue says that she died slaying a dreadlord named Belthris. And what's interesting is that this dreadlord named Belthris returned 13 years later in game as a mob Gul'dan summons during the Nighthold raid in Legion. Holy which shit! Which I thought is pretty neat. Anyways, back to the Scarlet God Crusade. damn, that's cool! The leaders of the monastery are located within the cathedral. Renault was given what he was promised and was promoted to Scarlet Commander of the Monastery Damn. and watches over it with Sally Whiteman. Damn. Together we shall spread the Crusade's ideals across this land. Now, I'd love to give you some backstory on who Lady Whitemane is, but she really doesn't have much of a backstory. She doesn't but have to. She's hot. That's it. That's all we need to know. Th that's, that's literally it. That's all we need to know. Yeah, that's, that's totally it. Her family was all killed by the Scourge, and she swears to avenge them. Which is the same story that a lot of the members of the Crusade have. Despite this, she is easily the most iconic character from the organization. I wonder why. Because of her... Uh, qu qualities? Yes. Of course, in-game, we go in and we kill all of these bosses. But that isn't what actually happens lore-wise. What actually happens is depicted in the Ashbringer comics. What happens is Darian Mograine, that anime guy I told you to remember, 
storms into Nax Ramus with the Argent Dawn, what? and kills his father Alexandros Mograine, whose body was resurrected by the Scourge and is now one of the four horsemen. Holy Darien shit! then takes the corrupted Ashbringer to the Scarlet Monastery, and the ghost of Alexandros Mograine decapitates his own son. No, wait, what? Players can experience this from Darien's Holy perspective shit. when they obtain the Corrupted Ashbringer in Classic and take it to the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. So, lore-wise, Renault is the only guy to die, but everyone else is alive and well. Okay. The next expansion that involves the Scarlet Crusade He's is Wrath I remember of the this. Lich King, and trust me, it isn't pretty. You see, there is a part of the Scarlet City Tears Hand called the Scarlet Enclave, okay. which was completely untouched by the Scourge until now. The Lich King and his Death Knights invaded these lands in their Flying Death Fortress. It is kind of crazy, isn't it? the city to waste. This is the starting experience for the Death Knights and Wrath of the Lich King. And during this quest line... Dude, I always thought this part of the, uh, the quest line was really cool. The, the first time I did it, I was like, wow, this is awesome. Because I always felt like the Scarlet Crusade was like one of the uh, the main like core features of WoW. You know, it was like the the one of the main original protagonists or sorry, antagonists of the game. Slowly invade and ultimately wipe out the Scarlet Enclave of all of its members. And the starting zone has some of the most annoying quests in the whole game. Like, you know, that one where you have to auto attack the Scarlet guys with those pokers. Remember that one? No. God, the starting zone sucks. I, I, no, I don't remember that at all. the is being invaded, High General Bridget Abendus, daughter of one of the original founders of the Scarlet Crusade, claimed to have a vision from the oh. light itself. The vision told her that she should take her most devoted followers of the Crusade and in journey to Northrend to continue their mission to purify all undead. Also, that is where the expansion takes place. This yeah, migration would, would be known as the Crimson Dawn, and it would revive oh, the Crusade yeah. to new they were like glorious right heights. I remember that. The group of devoted followers were renamed to the Scarlet Onslaught yeah. and set sail for Northrend. This was badass. Okay. In Northrend, they established... Dude, I remember there was another place in, in Ice Crown where they were at, and it looks so cool, man. It was one of the most badass zones in the game. Multiple bases. The main two being New Hearth Glen and the Onslaught Harbor. Mm -hmm. The Onslaught Harbor easily being one of the top five most underrated locations in all of WoW because of just so out of the way it is from everything else. Yeah, I don't know why they were down there. The priest in me likes when you confess your sins, but the Inquisitor in me likes to punish you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't even know that was in the game. What the fuck? Commander! I see someone on the shore. What? Let me see. By the light. Is that Admiral Westwind? Wait, what? On the shores of Northrend, Scarlet member Admiral Barian Westwind was found. He was the captain of a previous Scarlet ship that sailed to Northrend years ago and was presumed to be long dead. I mean, there's even a statue for him in the Hall of Champions back in the Scarlet Monastery. That's cool. Admiral Westwind assured his fellow crusaders that he was the only one to survive on the ship and ah. simply wanted to pledge himself to be an advisor for High General Abendus. Besides, he had been surviving in this hellish tundra for years, so surely he knew a thing or two about- Just kidding, you son of a bitch. Uh, it was actually the Dreadlord Malganus. I am Malganus. I am eternal. So what? the Scarlet Onslaught was deceived. Wait, for why did he do that? What the hell is he doing this for? What the hell? What the fuck? A second 
time They're so by a stupid. Dreadlord, and Malganus manipulated his way up the ranks. Wow. But the real reason for the Scarlet Onslaught's involvement in Northrend yeah. ultimately being a failure was because of the overwhelming might of Horde and Alliance player characters. Yeah, we just beat the shit out of them. I've him. found that without proper guidance, Crusades quickly become onslaughts. Okay. okay, so let's jump to Cataclysm, where it's more of the same story. The Argent Dawn back in the Plaguelands made the best strategic decision of their life, and they allied with the player character. That's smart. <laughs> yeah, we just killed Earth all of them, right? was taken over by the Argent Dawn, and Tyr's hand was still left in ruins after the invasion of the Death Knights. Yeah, also, was Balmazar was defeated within Stratholme leaving the Scarlet Monastery as the Crusade's last bastion of hope. During the Cataclysm, they revamped a lot of dungeon quests by putting the quest givers at the start of the dungeon. Yeah, and the quest that helped a lot. the Scarlet Monastery wings is one of my new favorite characters. What? It's Joseph the Awakened. You see, Joseph is a part of a group called the Scarlet Renegades, a group who have realized the error of their Crusade's ways and are attempting to overthrow their rulers. Okay. Why not just join the Argent Dawn? I don't know. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. They just really look good in red. That's Anyways, true, though. Joseph seems to be having problems of his own, as the further you progress through the dungeon, his name changes from Joseph the Awakened to Joseph the Crazed. What? And finally, Joseph the Insane, where he's found dancing in the fountain in the cathedral and has the best art of all time in the old World of Warcraft trading card game. No way, this is true. Is this really true? Like, I, there's no way. Like, I, it actually is true. Holy fucking shit. I thought he was just goofing around. You can still see it? Holy fuck, I can't believe this. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at this on my own. So during the Cataclysm, lore-wise, is when all of the bosses die, except yeah. for Sally Whitemane. Why does everyone who comes to the Scarlet Monastery want to kill me? Am I out of touch? No, it is the heathens who are wrong. True. And in Miss Pandaria, the Scarlet Monastery was revamped. Instead of four separate dungeons, it was combined into two dungeons instead. The most notable difference is that all of the bosses have been changed, but they're kind of just like off-brand versions of the original bosses. <laughs> that Bro, being like, I hated that boss. Like, that was the dumbest thing. It was, yeah, it was just a scuffed version. Oh my god. The the new Scarlet Dungeons were okay. I remember, dude, running Scarlet Halls was fucking fun. Uh, back in the day, uh, the challenge mode, it was great. I loved it. There are some interesting ones, like Flame Weaver Kogler, who is so ashamed by the Scarlet Crusade's embarrassing history, he has He's taken it upon it all himself fire. to scorch the library and destroy all all evidence of their embarrassing past. Yeah, Everything I would... must burn! None shall know the Scarlet Crusade's shame! Also, a lot of these new bosses have, like, really, really thick accents. Ah, stupid animals! I'll put you down after I kill these weaklings! My fists are scarlet with your blood! <laughs> if you die... You die. To think you've come so far, only to perish here. Accents have always been a weird thing in the Warcraft universe the because fuck? there isn't really a place in the universe where he. So they're a bunch of fucking like. So it's they're red and they're all yeah they're all Russians. Like what the fuck is this? Jesus, that's a little bit much, isn't it? Russians are bad, apparently. Humans live that have identifiable characteristics of heavy Russian or German accents. Yeah. They kind of just have them because they sound cool. The final That's boss true. fight is still with Lady Whitemane and just some just random the same thing. dude named Commander Duran. We defeat them and with the help from Lillian Voss, a complicated character I can maybe make a video about in the future, we yes. make sure that Sally Whitemane stays dead forever. Wow. Okay, so in Legion, the Death Knights fight their way through the Scarlet Monastery Again? and resurrect Sally Whitemane what? to be one of the four horsemen. And she so, I was really upset about this. Because we had an opportunity to have a hot, thick, goth girl in the game. Like, you understand that? Like, we did. It was good. And then it, she's wearing this, like, new outfit, and she's not looking the same. Yeah. And she doesn't look the same. She's got, like, that weird fucking, like, tumboy haircut now. Like, what the fuck happened, man? 
She's just uh, surprisingly okay with it after yeah. committing her entire life when she was living to killing undead for some reason. And finally, the Scarlet Crusade had one small cameo in the Battle for Azeroth expansion. It was the start of Near quest, the Calston right? estate in Tirasfall, there is a collection of pamphlets from a subgroup called the Scarlet Brotherhood and are filled with insane ramblings and, uh, yeah. Basically, the Scarlet Crusade have kind of just turned into conspiracy theorists. I'll spare you the details. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck that happened. Yeah, they straight up took stuff from, like, Alex Jones and, and like, the way that he talked, and they just put it into the game, and they're like, yeah, that's like the Scarlet Crusade. Like, yeah, basically QAnon. Yeah, the Q Crusade. There you go. Details, but to sum all of the ramblings up, they think Anduin is an undead-loving traitor who is secretly trying to usurp control over Lordaeron by marrying Kali Menethil. Also, the Scarlet oh Brotherhood plans to team up with Greymane and kill all of the undead, then kill Greymane. And lastly, okay, that's good. the Brotherhood says that they have secretly been raising the son of Kali Menethil, who will be the new king of Lordaeron. But Kalia has a daughter and not a son, so that can't even be true in the ex well that doesn't matter because that was uh that that was uh it was censored yeah it was censored that's why they don't know about that exploring azeroth eastern kingdom's book it is stated that the crusade was totally wiped out in legion and this group called the scarlet brotherhood is the only remnant of the crusade we have left so the idea of the Scarlet... I hope they bring him back somehow. I always thought the Scarlet Crusade was really cool, and I thought their armor looked really cool too. So if they bring them back, that would be good, because then I could kill them and get their armor. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Crusade ever returning in Warcraft's story is... unlikely. I don't think it'll they happen either. They have been either. constantly losing ever since World of Warcraft came out, and their leaders have either been killed or raised into undeath, but what remains are the memories of one of the most interesting and iconic factions in all of Warcraft. The Silver Hand failed, Paladin. Oh. Join us. Take up the path of vengeance. True. Yes, we get it. You're edgy. Congratulations. Can we move this along? Wait, did Uther really say that to her? There's one more, like, shorter, like, Platinum WoW video about Scarlet Crusade. It's 10 minutes. Here we go. During the war against the Scourge in the Eastern Kingdoms, Crusader Alexandros Mograin wielded a mighty weapon called the Ashbringer. Right. With each swing, the Paladin cleaved through waves of undead. But in an act of betrayal, Alexandros was struck down and his holy weapon forever corrupted. I didn't Such even know it got corrupted that way, too. ...against the invading undead dealt a massive blow on the Crusade's morale. If they were ever going to purge their lands of the Scourge, they'd need a new weapon. One that would rival the holy the power fuck? of the Ashbringer. The priests of the Scarlet Crusade banded together to empower the most powerful weapon Azeroth had ever seen. But little did they know, uh. its strength would soon be the death of them. It's just a stupid little stick. Like, who cares? Hey, who gives a shit about that? A duck walked into an apothecary and he said, Give me some chapter and put it on my bill. But I pushed that from behind. We watched this two days ago? No, we didn't. I would have noticed. Okay. Wait, we did? We watched it? No, we didn't. No, we didn't, because it would be right there. It would be right there at the top. It would be Asmongold Reacts. Yeah, you guys see that? Yeah, you guys are trolling. That Yeah, fucking right, man. You guys freak me out. Dude, I was actually thinking, like, wait, what the fuck? Am I going crazy? Holy shit. Okay. The Scarlet Crusaders had found what they were looking for, a crystal 
empowered by pure darkness. Such an artifact would be paramount if they were ever going to create a weapon that matched the power of the Ashbringer. So this is you how see, they got the it? the Ashbringer's holy powers were imbued by a similar dark crystal that was filled with the powers of the light. Right. The violent clash of these two types of magics altered the crystal into one of pure light. Yeah, that was the, the crystal or they the forged the Ashbringer. Now, the Scarlet Crusade would do the same with a similar dark crystal they obtained in the Plaguelands. Okay. Yeah, it's a little hillspread. Yep, that's right. For weeks, a council of ten priests practiced the ritual to infuse the purified artifact into a weapon. With their holy powers combined, they'd develop a sanctified staff that would be integral in purging their homeland of the vile scourge. But during the moments of the staff's creation, deception intervened. Oh, there. Wait, it's the same Satan guy? Satan Dathrohan was Wait. the leader of the Scarlet Crusade. In reality, it was actually the Dreadlord Balnazar So he disguise. fucked this up too! He watched as the weapon was forged. It was... unacceptable. If his underlings wielded such a force, it could lead to his identity being unmasked. Yeah, that would In make sense. In act of pure malevolence, the Dreadlord interrupted the ritual with his dark magic. Okay. Jesus Christ! The violent explosion of holy and dark magic instantly killed the ten priests. But when the smoke cleared, the artifact named Light's Wrath trembled with unstable energies. That's bad, dude. Al I have no idea. Pondered for a moment. <laughs> the Dreadlord decided that he would not destroy the weapon now. Its unstable power made it less of a threat to him and he kind of just simply wanted to see the havoc it would cause among his fanatical underlings instead. So he's like, he just gave them some bullshit and just let them fuck around with it? Oh my god, yeah, it's badass. Like, <laughs> this will be funny, see what they do with this shit. Oh my god. Oh, and havoc it did cause. They're killing see, each other over foolish it? members of the Scarlet Crusade would attempt to wield Light's Wrath. They'd raise the staff up into the sky, but yep. the artifact's overwhelming power was nearly impossible to harness, and the wielder, their allies, and all surrounding undead would be ignited in an unstable blaze of holy light. So everybody just kills himself over the and over? The dangerous unstable power of the weapon was something every wielder was knowledgeable of, but the enticing power of such a weapon led all of the crusaders into a violent, agonizing death. They're so stupid! In one recollection, what? Grand Inquisitor Isselin stated that at Tyr's hand, the Scourge outnumbered their forces 20 to 1. That's a lot. But with Light's Wrath, all of the undead, its wielder, and many of the Scarlet Crusade soldiers were killed in a holy blast. The few soldiers Friendly that fire. Of survived the torrent of magic were left absolutely shell-shocked. In the days that followed, these soldiers could not even dress or feed themselves without assistance after oh, what they just saw. That's like me. <clears throat> so let's be honest here. Did the Scarlet Crusade members kill themselves in this battle? I mean, uh, yeah. yes, but when they ultimately kill all of their enemies in a 20 to 1 battle. That's pretty good. You know, uh, good ratio. I think those losses are acceptable. Yeah. Such a powerful weapon caught the attention of the Kirintor mages from Dalaran. I would specifically, so. the mage named Isserin, who made it his duty to secure the staff. He tried to track down the weapon to make sure it didn't fall into the wrong hands, okay. but each time Light's Wrath killed its wielder, it didn't take long for another crazed zealot to yoink the staff and try and wield it for themselves. All across the plague lands, there were blown out craters of holy destruction from every attempt oh at my wielding God. Light's Wrath. And it wasn't just used against undead either. Bro, these guys are stupid as fuck, man. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so dumb. No one expects the Scarlet Inquisition. Crusaders oh, no. attempted to use the staff to uh, purify innocent townspeople. Of course who they the did. The Crusade thought were unclean. And of course, everyone died in the process. Yeah, that's the way it goes. 
Probably the most infamous wielder of the artifact was a sadistic man named Inquisitor Halbin. Within the dark recesses of the Scarlet Monastery's dungeons, Halbin used the staff to torture forsaken prisoners. Okay. The Inquisitor inflicted whatever pain was necessary to extract asshole. information from his prisoners. But the more he tormented the forsaken, the more he learned to loathe every fiber in their rotten being. No longer was Halbin torturing the forsaken for information. <laughs> now he was doing it just out of sick, sadistic just beats pleasure. The shit out One of him. night during an intense torture session, his hatred for the undead dominated his mind, breaking his focus on wielding Light's wrath. This split second of broken concentration was all it took for the torturer's weapon to betray him. Uh huh. Burning holy light engulfed the torture chamber. Inquisitor Holbin died a slow, painful death, and his tortured screams echoed throughout his chambers in the same roaring cacophony as his victims. Okay, so this is where our story falls apart. Somehow, some way, that is not explained. Light's wrath fell into the possession of a troll priest named Jakar. What? She used the weapon in an expedition to Northrend to destroy the scourge. How the? But after some time, she lost control of the weapon and it blew herself up. Blinded her, but it didn't kill her. And she oh. abandoned the artifact in Northrend. And well, then somehow, some way, the weapon found its way back to the Eastern Kingdom. What? And it cycled through the hands of multiple well-meaning priests and paladins. It yeah, they all died. Okay. Then, a group of hooded horsemen from the Tower of Karazhan, called the Dark Riders, tried to claim the staff in Duskwood. I got it. When they touched the staff, a pure wave of holy energy echoed from the weapon, and it sent them running away. And by the way, yeah, uh, WoW copies a lot of concepts from other universes, but the Dark Riders are literally just the Nazgul from Lord of the Rings, aka the guys called the Black Riders, and like... Uh, the thing is, look, guys, I mean... The, it was a good idea, right? I mean, shit, it's a good idea. You might as well use it. I mean, what are you going to have to... You don't have to reinvent the wheel. That seems good enough for me. Seems just fine. Yeah, it's okay. Where do you cross the line between referencing something and just blatantly copying something? Okay, anyways, right back here. to some weird random story beats. And then somehow, some way, the staff fell into the hands of the Twilight Hammer Cult. Holy shit. Who tried to suck out all the holy energy from the staff. But the guarantor mage Isserin, who made it his life's mission to track down Light's wrath, he got intervened. It. But don't tell me he's about to use it and get himself killed. With the staff in his possession, no way. the mage conjured a protective spell over the staff. Oh. Yeah, killed him instantly. Despite this, no. <laughs> Light's wrath was transported to the Nexus Vault, located within the Nexus in Northrend. And this is where the player character okay. Priest comes in. All right, never mind. When they arrive, the Nexus yep. is currently occupied by Ethereals, trying to Got hold it. the power of the Nexus and the artifacts within the vaults. And this is the disappointing part of our story. Right. The rest of the questline is pretty much a direct copy of the Arcane Mage questline for their artifact weapon. Yeah. And the origin of Light's Wrath is only told to players through text, Leaving oh. the story totally unknown to oh, most players. Wow. Which is a shame because it's one of the most outrageous and enjoyable little stories within what Warcraft. What a surprise. And honestly, it just uh, gave me an excuse to talk about the Scarlet Crusade some more. Yeah. And by talk about the Scarlet Crusade some more, what he really means is use White Mane Rule 34 art for quick bait again. Which, to be honest, I'm not complaining. That's fine with me. Yep. It's okay. Yeah, it's a good video. I thought it was a good video. I, I had no idea about any of this shit, man. I really had no idea. Bait me daddy. Yeah, smart. Yeah, he's a smart man. Absolutely. This is a good video. I didn't even know that's what the staff was from. I thought it was just some fucking, like, you know, it's some, uh, you know, it's some pretty shit, right? So you've got the pretty shit, and it, it's got, like, stained glass windows, like a church. Ah, it looks kind of cool. That's about all I thought about. Yeah, that's about it. If only storytelling was as good as it was in these videos. I know, man. That's what I think is so sad. Uh, it's just like I wish that they were better. Yeah, give a, this is from Platinum Wow. Give them a sub. Give it a like. This video came out kind of recently, so it'll definitely help out. I get Ashbringer strong and Light's Wrath is impressive, but neither match the sheer strength and power of White Mane's thighs. Okay. <laughs> all right.